Thank you, Chairman Saylor. Good afternoon. So Act 100 of 2016 requires that the IFO analyze the cost of proposed collective bargaining agreements before they're finalized. And the process was intended to give the public and policymakers like ourselves the tools that we need to understand a potential cost and impacts of a collective bargaining agreement over the lifetime of the agreement. So the agreement that was negotiated with AFSCME Council 13 uh, back in 2016, there was a cost analysis by your office, I believe, and the analysis had come out at around $292 million for the three years of that contract. So the IFO came back with a 390.3 million dollar estimate, um, almost a hundred million dollars more, about more than 33% more um, than what your office had projected. Why is there such a huge difference between your office's estimate of that contract and theirs and how has it actually worked out? Um. I can get you the data on how it's worked out. The, if, the main difference was the turnover factor. And so when we did our estimate, we factored in turnover because we know we have people who are leaving. We know the percentages of people leaving. We had it at the, um, we looked at turnover for the specific unions that we were dealing with for each of the collective bargaining agreements. And we would factor in that turnover knowing that the retirees were making higher salaries and the individuals who were coming in as we factored in turnover. The, F I, the IFO did not factor in turnover, and so they kept the employees at um, an as-is analysis and said if those individuals would remain for all three years and you wouldn't have that turnover, this would be the total cost. So it was kind of a difference in the methodology um, that we used when we looked at total costs because we know that you know as we budget, we budget for turnover and the um, changes that that has as on our, our overall personnel costs. And that's a huge difference, 33%, $100 million on a three, what was estimated at almost $300 million contract. Did they not receive the data that they would need to factor in the turnover, or? Yeah, we gave them all our data. So it was a different assumption. Thank you. The uh, civil service modernization that you've touched on, and we've talked about it many times in the past, along with having a hearing um, on the issue with the Civil Service Commission uh, being represented, and we had passed Legislation Act 69 and 167 of 2016, enacted in July and November, respectively, that would modernize the civil service system and make it more efficient. So the Civil Service Commission, um, after we'd passed that in July and November of 16 and 17, they proposed regulations in March of 2017. So many of us looked at what they were doing, um, believed that uh, what they had done was unacceptable changes that, that uh, changed the clear language of the acts and did not abide by the acts. So after they'd received many negative comments, um, they withdrew those, I believe in January of this year. So right. it took from March of last year and all the discussions we had till January of this year, another three quarters of a year or more, to withdraw the regulations that didn't actually implement the law that the legislature had passed and the governor had signed that, that you all in fact were from your department were in favor of. So where are we now with the civil, and I don't understand there's legislation that would put more responsibility that the Civil Service Commission currently has under your area of responsibility. I mean, is that, do you believe that's the answer? Do we need to just take some of those responsibility away from the Civil Service Commission that's ignoring the law and not implementing the law that the legislature clearly passed and gave them direction under? Um, do we need to, do we need to radically change that organization in order to have our laws implemented? Um, wh where do you see a solution to the problem of these individuals actually not abiding and implementing the law that we've passed? Um, so 
We have been working with them, and you're correct, they did pull the regulations. We have been working with them to implement uh, process changes and technology changes. Uh, we've been you know, providing assistance to redesign process, to provide project management. Um, we have implemented, we will be implementing those changes in April. Um, to a certain degree. I think when we talk about the modernization, we have to look at it from a workforce perspective. Um, we talk about two sides of our workforce um, and how we recruit and hire those because of this um, duplication between what Office of Administration does and what the civil service does. You know, we're talking about uh, both going out and recruiting. We talk about both doing background checks. So we have a lot of duplication in the process because of how we have built this system over the last, well, since 1941. Um, so we're really looking at it as a way to modernize and get us into a place where we're recruiting and hiring in a way that other states, the federal government, and the public wants us to do from a, an employee coming into the Commonwealth perspective. Well, I understand that, and that's why we passed the legislation. Uh, I think for the public to look, to look on or to watch these hearings and understand that we passed modernization laws, uh, you know, more than a year and a half ago for one act and almost a year and a half ago for the other. And we're trying to modernize, but it's taken a year and a half and we still don't have regulations, which I didn't think we needed that many regulations to implement the clear language of the law. So, so do you believe that the Civil Service Commission is fulfilling their mission, or are they not fulfilling their mission as a result of, of not implementing the law that we've clearly passed? You'd think part of their mission is to actually abide by the law, but they're kind of yeah. hamstringing your organization from moving forward with modernization. It shouldn't take, I mean, there's people out there looking for jobs. Correct. A year and a half later, we don't have regulations to implement the modernization to help people get the job. Correct. Yeah. Uh, um, again, it is moving at a much slower pace than we would want. Um, you know, I can't speak for the commission. Uh, they're a separate entity. I can tell you just what we have been doing to try to move it forward. But you support the legislation that would take responsibilities away from them and put it under your, under your area of responsibility? Yes, we do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.